the 27th of May 2023, just gone 6.55pm Chicago time. Do hope you are doing well. So it's the weekend again and time for another weekend futures market recap. We're going to go through 15 of the largest futures markets and I'll show you what I'm seeing on my charts. Going to make this a pretty quick video because I'm feeling like crap on our travels back to Australia. Uh, as soon as we hit the ground on Australia and Sydney, we go and do all our medical tests. And one of those involved going to Sydney Hospital where both my wife and I, Mrs. E-Mini Watch, picked up a superbug. <laughs> We've been feeling like crap for about 10 days since that visit. Anyway, uh, hospitals, oof, they've got to be the worst places to be. Anyway, hope you are doing well on this uh, long weekend. Don't forget, we got a uh, day off on Monday with Memorial Day, so there's going to be very thin trading on the markets, which is kind of good. And everybody's going to be digesting this week's news. Everybody's talking about NVIDIA and their results and the reaction that we've had in the NASDAQ. But to be honest, we've been talking about this for at least a month because uh, that's when we saw the uh, triple uh, resistance come up on the NASDAQ chart. And I said big things happen at triples. We've got some good reasons why this is going to break to the upside because we had blue depressional bars at the lows, exhaustion cells, and so on. And that triple has broken out super strong at the moment. And we're up a uh, thousand po points on the NASDAQ uh, since the breakout. And we've got a triple setting up on the E mini. So everything's going to follow along with the momentum into equities. And that's the uh, interesting play for the next week. So here we go. This is a revisit of the NASDAQ chart. This is the, the futures daily chart here. And this is when we were talking about a triple climbing up. We've got the better indicators on two panels side by side. Everything to do with volume on the left-hand side with better momentum and better pro-am. Everything to do with price on the right-hand side, which is based on better sine wave, giving us uh, support and resistance levels in three different time frames. You can see this is what I talk about a triple setting up. It was an end of trend on the low and the highest time frame and the intermediate time frame is resistance. And they're super tight, uh, close together all around that 13,300 couple there. Big things happen at triples. We either get rejected at that level and kind of come off or we break through them into a big uptrend. So this is going to go places because for this to end, we have to at least see a pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame. So this is going to run until we, we see that. So uh, hold on uh, to your hats because this is uh, it's going to be big. And potentially, there's been so much negativity in the market over the last month and a half. Everybody's saying end of the dollar, end of the world, end of the economy, end of blah, blah, blah. Uh, you've got to suck it in a lot of people to have short positions at the moment or at least be out of the market. And then all of a sudden, they see the market racing away and breaking up like this. I mean, people are going to be stopped out of positions, reversed out of positions, and join in the momentum. So uh, let's watch, uh, wait and see, because uh, this is going to be interesting. Where it goes, who knows? Uh, but we're halfway back to the highs. So we're at a 50% tracement of those highs, and we're just confirming that we're getting into an uptrend. So we could be revisiting the highs, uh, which is another 2,000 or so points away, a uh, bit more, 2,500 points away on the NASDAQ. So that's the NASDAQ daily chart. Let's look at the E-mini daily chart here. And there we go. There's our triple setting up again here. So if I go, I can, can I do that? Yeah, here we go. So you can see the SR1, 2, and 3. So that's support resistance level on the low, intermediate, and the highest time frame. The lowest time frame is 1, intermediate is 2, the highest time frame is 3. And there you can see 4,000, 198, 195, 4,226. Super tight. You know, what is that? 30 points between the uh, highs and of those uh, resistance levels and the lows, that little band. So I like really tight bands. That's again, another triple lining up. And we know that it's going to break up because the NASDAQ is breaking up and everybody's going to go along. Uh, all the different indices are moving at different rates because the different composition of those. Uh, Russell's been beat down because of the high exposure to the regional banks. NASDAQ is breaking up because the high exposure to the NVIDIAs and the, uh, the tech world. So uh, the e is a little bit in the middle, 500 stocks, a little bit of everything flying along, uh, but they're all going to benefit from that momentum. We're not going to have a, a divergence. There's a divergence of performance in terms of the rate of change, those different indices, but there's not going to be you know two going down and two going up. It's like, no, they're all going to go up, uh, but just at different rates. So there we go. It's a triple uh, on the E-mini. And again, same deal. It's like the intermediate time frame is sitting behind here. Are we sitting behind that level? 4,195. Yep. And we've got to run until we see pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame, most likely. So it's going to be fun. Uh, but we've been talking about this for at least a month with this setup of the uh, triples and where they're going to go. Uh, so shouldn't be surprised of this. 
So going down uh, the mini 135 minute chart, exactly three 135 minute bars in a day session. Background printed in red, it's been red for a while, means we're in an uptrend in terms of price and volume. We've got all these nice resistance levels to break through into more uptrends. We had exhaustion buy getting the move going. When the exhaustion buy is within the channel like that, that's just starting the move. So we've got to go see an exhaustion pattern like that to, to end this move on 135 minute chart. So we're in uptrend. Uh, the 45 minute chart and an uptrend. We had a bit of a nasty week this week, settled into a blue professional bar coming in here. At those lows, the blue professional bars step in, hold it at 41.20, bang, we're back up to 42.20, so up 100 points on that. Background in red again, so we're a confirmed uptrend. This I like for a trade because what I like to call it a, a court uh, in the dark, and this is dark because it's black. We've not got a confirmed uptrend because the price bars are in white, uh, but the volume bars are in an uptrend, if you like, the volume signals there, and there are, then our uh, SR2 level, so our support resistance level comes in on the intermediate time frame, and then that's good for uh, confirmation that we're in an uptrend there. 15 minute chart, there we go, there's our exhaustion sell at the bottom, blue professional bars come in, bullish divergence, and we just set off to the upside. We didn't test in much, I mean this is on the zero line, sometimes we see a flush pattern, sometimes we don't. This just got going, blue professional bars, a little gathering there, waiting for that breakout above the trailing stop with better pro-amp, bang, and we got up to, uh, off to the races there. The yellow lines, solid yellow lines, are the beginning and the ends of the weeks. So that was this week's trade. We sold off after blue professional bars, took some profits up here, and then we had an exhaustion buy pattern at the very beginning of the week, and then we sold off super hard, and then the professionals step in to hold it, and then step in to buy the gathering as we break to new highs, and we're, we're busting through this 4200 level. Then down to the uh, tip bar chart, 13,500 tip bar chart, which is roughly equivalent to something like a 20 minute chart or so. You can see all of the week's activity in here. So we had amateur up bars here at the beginning of the week. They got wrong footed here at this point. We broke down. Blue professional bars step in. There's that nasty little uh, play uh, that got rid of a whole bunch of short volume at that point. So people shorting there got wrong footed and we break to the upside. The background's all in red means we're in a confirmed uptrend, I mean, been a confirmed downtrend on this tip bar chart, and we took off to the upside. So that's the story at the moment. I think that's going to be the story for the next week when I look at the other tip bar charts. I'm not convinced there are a whole bunch of signals there. I think the Forex charts, though, are going to start to turn around. We've been waiting for the turn in you know, the Euro, the British Pound, Aussie Dollar, and so on. And just before going to the tip bar charts, I'm going to show you the daily charts. I call these daily charts, but on the Forex charts, it's actually a 460 minute chart here. So uh, there are exactly three 460 minute bars in a 24 hour session of the Forex futures. And you can see here, uh, it's been an, a nasty decline into seven uh, down here, but we have a bullish divergence pattern come in here. So just like this, we sold off with exhaustion sold, bullish divergence comes in, blue professional bars, hold the lows, we get to the highs, they've come back down exactly to that same level and we're going to bounce off here. So uh, bullish divergence has come in. What would be nice is over the next few days uh, on the Forex charts, the Euro, people buy that low. We have a blue professional bar come in. We stair step the trailing stop in better pro-am and the bullish divergence uh, holds and we trace away in the Euro. So the Euro's looking like it's going to turn on the longer time frame chart, but you know we need confirmation. And the British pound, same thing, it's sold off. Uh, we've got a sign of strength come in here and a bullish divergence come in after that cut off there. I don't think these are in downtrends. They've just been weakening over the last several months because we have not had an exhaustion buy at the highs. We haven't had blue professional bars at the highs. All we've done is gone into an overbought scenario here and we've weakened from there. At lows, for example, here we've got exhaustion sell. We're oversold. We get blue professional bars come in. We didn't have that type of pattern at the highs up here. No blue professional bars, no overbought. Let's just go back to the Euro chart. I'm pretty sure on the Euro chart, got the same thing here. Yeah, no blue professional bars at the highs, no exhaustion buys at that point. So on these longer time frame charts, we're in an uptrend on the Euro. We're in an uptrend on the British pound. And all we've done is add a little bit of profit taking and weakening from there. And this is where it's going to catch and start moving uh, up. So we've had some false signals on the tip bar charts over the last couple of weeks, certainly on the Euro. 
Uh, we keep on lurching down and down. You can see these are the triple signals going off and they just cannot catch this low. We keep on lurching down. But with this week's activity, equities went strong into the end of the week. Here we still had weakness test on Friday here with the euro back at those lows, but hopefully that's going to freak people out. So if I'm right in terms of this turn, the bullish divergence that come in on the euro on the higher time frame chart, that this is the week that this really starts to catch on the euro and the euro starts to strengthen and we go into a risk on situation with the euro, British pound, Aussie dollar strengthening and equities. But I think that the plays in equity, equities is what, what is moving and wait and see Monday, Tuesday, because there's going to be a lot of out of thought amateur money are flooding in because they're chasing the momentum. They realize they got a direction wrong over the last two or three months. British pound, same thing, trying to find this low, all these triple signals going off this week. Is this enough uh, down here with that blue professional bar and the testing at that point? So let's wait and see this week if we get the pounds uh, starting to strengthen. Aussie dollar, uh, that didn't work uh, two weeks ago and we've continued to come down. I did talk about this signal uh, last week. It was a beauty blue professional bars into those highs. We'd had one little blue professional bar here, catch it at the lows. And then on that retrace, all the professionals step in, bang, and now we head down. And then they're starting to pick it up. They're starting to pick it up here and here. They leg in, the professionals leg in. They don't just buy it all at what they think is at the bottom. They need to uh, start buying positions as we head down. And so breaking above the highs uh, of that little blue professional sequence there will be the signal that uh, that low has been found and all those professionals were correct buying it down here. So getting above 66 on Aussie dollar uh, would be a signal that uh, that's going places. And then lastly, Japanese yen. Japanese yen. I mean, the signal for this was uh, two, two and a half, three weeks ago. Let me just go back and show you. Yeah, there we go. Last signal we had was a short signal on the triples and bang, that was up at 75. Are we down? What are we down at? 71, 65. Yeah, so you can see blue professional bars starting to leg in, leg in again. We've got exhaustion cell bullish divergence, uh, flush pattern. I mean, that's looking really interesting for the Japanese yen to uh, to have a low uh, down here and to pick that up. So I'd be interested to see how that plays out this week. Then equities, e mini on the 13,500 tip bar chart. We got all our signals last week, bang, bang, bang. And then came into those highs, a little bit of profit taking blue professional bars step in here, came into the lows, and that was the midweek signal. All those blue professional bars stepped in at that point, and we just took off to the upside. Exhaustion sell, getting rid of a whole bunch of sellers at that point. We've come back up. So it didn't generate a signal. It's unfortunate because we didn't get exhaustion sell bullish divergence on this area here, leading into that oversold. But you know, the patterns aren't always perfect. We're definitely in an uptrend. I think if you go one time frame down, though, the uh, 4,500 tip bar chart, we did get a signal kind of week. And then 10-year notes. Here we go this week's activity. Midweek, we got a signal short, which is nice, into those lows. We've got a signal at the moment, but that's based off an exhaustion sell there. That's almost getting the move going, continuation of that move on the way down here. So although we've got a signal here in 10-year, I don't know. Let's wait and see uh, what that happens. Not as convincing as the others. So um, not particularly interested in any of the other markets because it's the, the activity is always going to be happening, I think, this weekend. Uh, the equities markets and then the forex markets going in. But here we go. Gold, a uh, little bit of a signal. Got into trouble here. Blue professional bars step in. We continue down. But that's a whole bunch of blue professional bars. That's pretty nice uh, for an exhaustion sell bullish divergence down here. So that's uh, interesting for gold. Silver. Yeah, look at this, whole bunch of signals. So lurching down, the professionals buying in at levels down here at 23, that's good. We've got a whole bunch of sign of uh, strength with the red arrows pointing upwards. So that's good, so that's interesting for silver and gold. I might have found, found a little bit of a temporary low to uh, go from. Bitcoin, not, nothing going on in the last two weeks. whole bunch of blue professional bars here into 27 and a bit. Uh, with exhaustion sell blue professional bars here at these highs, we fall off there into those lows. No blue professional bars at the lows here, and they've come in on the retrace. So don't think Bitcoin uh, is setting up, but there's plenty of other things to trade in the meantime. Crude, same thing with crude, not a lot going on. We had some signals long. Long again, come into a whole bunch of blue professional bars here. So uh, the uptrend is not over, I don't think, uh, but we haven't seen the end of this. We need to see blue professional bars come the lows on that sequence. Uh, there should have been blue professional bars coming in there if that was really a low for that move. So nothing on crude there. 
Natural gas, that was good trade uh, up here at the highs. Classic signal, triple. Exhaustion buy, bearish divergence, blue professional bars. We roll over, it's overbought with grey background. Break the uh, trailing stop, bang, we get a signal, nice short. But now we're setting up the other way. So we've got blue professional bars, exhaustion, uh, sell, bullish divergence, oversold. So we'll wait and see for a signal in natural gas this week. So that's natural gas. Copper, copper signaled nicely this week. Goes in with the, the equities market as well. But that's a classic. That's what we're looking for. All the blue professional bars come in, bang, 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 bang. Exhaustion sold, bullish divergence, oversold. We break the trailing stop. We get our signals, bang, and we're away. So uh, on copper, so that's looking good. And then also the ag signaled this week. So we had corn, the very beginning of the week, had a triple signal and it raced away higher, which was good. Soybeans signaled last week and we've been fussing around, playing with these lows here, but so it's trying, it's trying uh, to break higher. So possibly that's gonna keep going higher this week. And then wheat, a nice signal last week into that short. And we've been fussing around a whole bunch of blue professional bars here, but whether it signals or not, I'm not sure because we haven't, we've had the last uh, volume signals we had were exhaustion buy. So maybe this is getting the move going and breaking out of this channel here. So there we go. Uh, tip bar charts with all the triple signals and the equities markets on the NASDAQ and the E-mini down from the daily charts to the lower time frame charts. And I think next week's going to be great fun trading. So uh, I hope your trading is going well and looking forward to next week.